Hey, Margie with the Asking Spot, and sometimes you just get lucky. I did with these curb finds. Now, I've done the bookshelf. That was sort of my test run for the rocker, and if you missed it, I'll do one of these and link in the description below. But the rocker, whoo, not enough testing. This project, it's a big one. Here goes. It was with the gloves. It was with the gloves. Aren't you gonna wear gloves? some time lapse of what I've just done to give you an idea of how long it's taking just these two back little parts of the rocker and a bit of the back seat part um that was eight minutes I'm thinking more like 50 not a Boston rocker officially because it was made in Massachusetts just not Boston check out the label oh and check this out it did have all the markings here's the thing I'm being able to get to the black and no problem, sort of the ebony of it all, and it looks great. But in tradition of these rockers, the really fiddly bit there part, you know, the scroll part, those are usually gold. And this one, you can see it's gold, but there's just no way to take the white paint off without really messing up the gold bait. I am trying, and that will hopefully be something I can restore once it's all done. Go later in the day, later in the day. I'm a big fan of Barry from Mad City Modern and I've seen that he does a lot of scrapers. He even has them in different sizes and shapes that would actually possibly work in these spindles. I, on the other hand, am a bigger fan of the heat gun. Of course, it could be just that I'm a little afraid of the scrapers, haven't tried them yet. Chicken. But the heat gun, uh, I bought chemical stripper for this thinking the spindles would be so hard and I may still use it for them, but for the rest of it, Thanks to two little tools, it hasn't been that bad. One of the tools is something you probably already have laying around. It's this. This actually works just like you would use a chemical stripper. If I want to get in and here, I can heat it up with a gun and start doing it towards the little crevices and scrape them off that way. And then the other piece, this came with my heat gun. And I'm not sure if I'm installing it correctly, but put it on this, heat it up, and then it scrapes, it's got the different a sizes and angles. <laughs> the irony. Dun, 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 dun. Have to admit, this stripper really works fast. Um, I'm glad I did it slower at first though because it was taking the gold markings right off. So at least now I know where those are. The other thing I can't convey in this video quite well enough is how badly it smells. It stinks. Yuck. Pros and cons of using a stripper. Well, the spray-on stripper that I used, um, it is infinitely faster and it does kind of do what it's supposed to do. Except for this whole massive can. I did just those little parts you saw in like the back half of these, you know, the bottom half of these rungs and not all that great either. I would probably have to use somewhere between three and five cans in order to finish this piece. Um, but I did have to use the cans because I wanted something that, you know, when I had it in a vertical, I could spray it on and it would stay. Um, not going to do this route again, though, because the definitely bad part about this is the smell. Yeah. The green ones, the lower odor ones, they most definitely are. This is, uh, how can I compare it to, um, well, let's just say I lived in Louisiana and after Mardi Gras, like right before they cleaned stuff. Smells on the like streets. beer. Streets. And puke. Yeah, that's preferable to the smell of this. No thank you. <laughs> well, after a lot of sanding, I mean a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of sanding. I almost went 
all in and just brought this back to the natural wood all the way through. But then I was like, nah, that wouldn't be right. It's not period appropriate. That would be more like what they originally were. These styles of chairs back in the 1700s, but this one's got Phillips screws in it. It's clearly not that old, so I shouldn't try to go with that finish. I got inspired though by one of my favorite YouTubers, Miss Flips. Now what she does is she'll do pieces in the art deco and mid-century modern range, but she does them sort of like they're a restoration, but she puts her own twist on it. So I'm gonna try and do this. This chair would have come out in the 1970s-ish, around there. I'm gonna do a lot of it in the same style as it would have then, but some of the decorative pieces I'm gonna tweak a little and do a little bit more like if I were there in that time period, what I would have asked for, possibly. So, here goes. Nearing the finish line, but here are some tips on some of the things I learned about the staining and sanding process that is different than when you're trying to paint something. Now, when you were painting something, you'd want to sand up to a 220 grit because you want the smoothest surface possible for that paint to stay on top of it. But when you're sanding something, you really only want to go to 120 because you need a little bit of the grooves for the pigments in the stain to hold on to. So what happened when I took it up to 220? Well, I not only had to do the two coats of stain, which was expected, but I pretty much had to do a third coat and then occasional little touch-ups because the stain just wasn't staying on. Oh, but I am glad that I did sand continuously all the way around it getting off all of the white paint because stain won't adhere to the paint in a way that's attractive it will leave some blotches and you'll end up having to go back and sand them out later so go ahead and take care of all the paint before you try to stain but only sand to 120 ish if you want to keep the stain sticking onto it. Now, another thing about stain is because it also has these pigments that are kind of floating on and off, more so with gel, it's more almost on top if you're using a stained gel, you don't want to use a wipe on polyurethane. Now, wait a minute, I did a project. I'll do one of these and one of these. Um, yeah, I did a project where I used wipe on polyurethane over this very black stain. Here's the one thing I did in that whole process that made it work, which was not following the instructions. I poured a ton of the wipe on, which was a total waste of product, added the time to drying, and could have really messed things up. I just got lucky. Because what happens when you're putting on a wipe on polyurethane over a stain, especially a gel stain that has a lot of the pigments that are laying on top and should be inside is, well, this wipe on polyurethane is created using mineral spirits. And what takes out the stain? What do you use to clean your brushes? Mineral spirits. So if I did this on this, I'd get a lot of blotchiness. So do not use a wipe on for your last, your first coat over your stained piece. Now, once I use a regular cover of a compatible top coat, so if I used a oil based there I'm gonna use say a polyurethane on here which is oil based if I get that first coat down and it dries then I can go and use the wipe on if I want to but I'm just gonna stick with the can anyway now we'll let this dry
is a clear winner. Um, still wool and brush though, yes. obviously there's really minimal difference in how the results turned out. So whatever you have works fine. It works great. The only reason I say the sponge is a clear winner is I did feel like it has a tiny, tiny bit less of, you know, the streaking marks in it. And mainly because when I was using it, I felt like I had more control. Now, there is a slight drawback with the sponge, and that's more of a... Um, it's your fault. Yeah, user error. Um, but it got too full, too saturated, so then I started creating some drips, and I went back later to clean up the drips, and that's never a good idea. Um, but the biggest thing that irked me about this whole thing was the one thing I did that I knew better not to do was there was a little something or another that got into it and I decided to wipe it out rather than just waiting for it to dry and letting my, you know, sanding do the trick. Now it's given me more work. All right, so light sand, second coat. So here's where we started. And if you could, please consider subscribing and giving a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. And now it's where I normally would say, here's where it finished and it would be nicely staged and everything would be all done and dry. But in this situation, um, no, I needed to get the video out. This has been three weeks of work on this and uh, yeah, I'm happy with where it's going and it really is almost done. Here it is with its second coat, not completely dry, the top coat, got a third coat coming, but you get the idea. Pretty much restored it to what it was, except for the whole university part. And I did tweak it a little bit more by not staining the top, the arms, and the rocker, but that is not inconsistent with what they would have done in the 1970s. And then I did tweak a little bit where the gold parts were placed minorly. I just didn't do the stripe in the back and I added some on the sides, but overall, pretty happy with this one and look forward to it getting its third coat and finally being something I can relax on. Thanks so much for watching the Asking Spot. Got bloopers coming up next. And a thumbs up would be great. Also, if you could like, you know, pinky swear and promise right now never to paint something with a lot of spindles, that would be great. <laughs> well, because remember a wipe on poly is actually a polycrylic mixed with you oh my goodness it's leaking all over me <laughs> a prod okay, let's take a I have no reason to think this wouldn't work except for that seems to be how my luck goes <laughs> so I'm gonna give it a shot we like to do everything first somewhere inconspicuously. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> so much so that I thought, you know, it's not that far if I wanted to go ahead and... It's also like the windiest day here. <laughs> I'm going to bring this inside. 